What's up, YouTube? It's Joe Ketchapalia again. As usual, I'm sitting on the couch trying to make some money investing in fractional real estate online. Uh, today, I'm going to be looking at a property on Lofty again. Uh, if you um, haven't watched the videos I've been doing on the Quad City properties, uh, that's the market this is in. Um, I'll include links in the description to um, the one I did just on that market in general, and then one where I did a little bit of analysis. I'm trying to drill down into which submarket I was going to focus on. And so, you know, that, that led me to looking at these four properties in um, Davenport. Uh, and today I'm going to just tell you, you know, uh, one of them I ruled out right away when I just did a little bit of basic ma math. This uh, 323 East 9th Street. Um, doing the math on what the what the token price is, you know, or the total price by multiplying the token price by those outstanding. And these prices were from a couple of days ago, but I don't think there's been that big of a swing. Um, implied a property value of 123,000. But when I look on Zillow, it thinks it's only worth 86. When I look on Redfin, it's 90. And then Homes.com gave me 74 to 99. So, so something just seems like it's not adding up with that property. Um, you know, not that I always trust these sites, but, you know, absent some other information uh, and when I have other opportunities, I'm just going to take their word for it and say, OK, that I'd be grossly overpaying at that one hundred and twenty three thousand price point. So I, I got rid of that one off the bat. Um, looking at uh, 615 rows. Um, also, there was some issues with it. It it shows up as vacant, actually, which it's not. And I'm going to go. Uh, this is one, well, it might technically be vacant, but it, it has a um, tenant in place already, and I'll show you this. There's a tenant signed up. Uh, Rose, let's see, right here. Um, they signed a lease anyway. Another lofty investor who's pretty active on the Discord and has spent a while talking about it. And so, you know, yeah, they said they approved it. Um, there 14. So it is technically vacant, um, but they do have a tenant in place. Um, you know, so I think, okay, this will start yielding something sometime soon. But then when I looked at the um, the current operating reserve, I, I realized, like, you know, this is, uh, it, it might be a while. Let's see. But we're going to sort this. Um, and this is this is the chart I always like to look at. They just uploaded this three days ago. But so you've got, you know, negative 4,600 in the operating reserve. You know, that's typically indicates unpaid bills. Sometimes they'll um, also get a loan. But so, you know, that that's not very exciting when we look at this math. Um, so based on, you know, looking at Zillow and red, looking at Zillow, it looks like you just have a tiny discount, right? You're only getting a 3% discount. 75,000 versus 73. And when you add in a negative operating reserve, um, it looks like maybe you're overpaying at the current token price. Um, but, you know, if you look at Redfin or homes.com, the, the story is a little bit better there, right? Like, I mean, then you think it looks like you're getting a pretty big discount. Um, but in either case, because of that, you know, large negative in the operating reserve, even with a tenant in place, um, you're going to have at least a year of no income, you know, where they're, where they're not paying out a dividend or we're not, not paying out, out any rental yield on that. And so I think that there'll probably be better buying opportunities. Like may, maybe if, if over some long period of time, these tokens start to get cheaper, which sometimes happens even when they're rented, um, when they have no yield for a long time. So in any case, at the moment, I'm, I'm going to avoid that one and, and not not buy it and so uh you know we looked at that and then did, did i already show you 209 east i don't think i did right and then this one 209 uh yep yeah. nope there we go oh no nope. more 209 east 13th um this one was a little bit strange uh it it could be a, a deal uh you know it is it's also let me show you. It is a relatively small discount according to Zillow, but both red in pretty big consideration, you know, as far as Redfin's concerned, homes.com gave it a big range. So not not super clear if we're getting a, a good discount on that one. 
um, you know, this was one that had the best rent to price ratio based on the rent in place. Um, is that right? Yeah, you know, 1.88 relative to what you're paying for it. Um, but when I, you know, when I dug into this one a little bit, let's see, we looked at that operating reserve again. So let's look at that. Um, pull those up. This is what you should be doing, right? Every property, we want to look at all the documents. But I think uh, sometimes if it's just easy to rule it out, it's easy to rule it out, right? And so when we look at this, okay, uh, it's actually a relatively small negative. Um, but if you look in the notes, what's happening is there is a... Um, so even though it showed that there was a tenant in place through the end of this month, I think that they've moved out. Uh, they, they had to replace the whole sewer line and they had to wait. It, it had collapsed and there was a big expense. There was a bunch of notes about it. Um, you know, it seems like it's fixed now, uh, or at least, uh, let's see, they confirmed that the repairs have been complete, um, but it didn't really say, like, is, you know, is the tenant still in there and paying rent? Um, that, and that's one of the things that's just aggravating about the way this site works is you just don't always get all the good info. Um, although based on this, I, I think that you, they, I think it probably is, I, but you know, you're going to get no rental yield until, um, that's paid back. And again, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting any yield. I'm not getting, maybe I'm not getting a discount depending on which property price is right. And so that just led, led me to look at, okay, I'm just going to look at this, uh, start event. I don't know if that's how you say that. You can tell I mispronounce all of these. Um, but, you know, when we look at this price, uh, it's a huge discount from what Zillow thinks it is. It's 30%. It's, a, it's also a big discount from what Redfin thinks it's worth and from, you know, the homes.com. Even if you look at the low end of their range, um, you know, it's, it's a pretty big discount there. It also, though, looks like it's rented for below what Zillow thinks it would rent for. Uh, when I looked on the map, it is a significantly, oh, let's actually pull up that property though, first, right before I, we get too far, close rows out. Let's see, get back here. There we go. Um, you know, it doesn't look very much different from the others. And that's one of the things, you know, I'm always looking at all the pictures. Um, it does have a really nice large lot. Uh, but one of the things I noticed, it doesn't have a garage in the back. Almost every home in the neighborhood has a big detached garage, and it, there isn't one here. Um, but let's take a look and, and do some of the other due diligence that we normally do, right? I took, I took a look at the FEMA flood map already. You can see it's actually somewhat close to flood zones, which I didn't expect. Um, but it is, it's, it's pretty, you know, you've got several houses in the way, and, like, from looking at the pictures, you can tell... Um, there's a slope in the street. So, uh, you know, I, I felt pretty good about this. Um, but it is one of the reasons why you always want to look at flood maps because you just never know. I mean, I, I didn't expect this to be a problem at all. Um, but, you know, it turns out it, it could have been. You know, if we were a few homes um, further south, we would have run into that. And so let's get back here. Um, and then, so what else do we do here? Uh, you know, it is getting a small rental yield. I was trying to figure out, okay, why is it small? And it's because they are applying 50% of the cash flow until the reserve is full, which is 800000 And so this says it's at 7800 I like to look at the documents too, right? Let's see. Um, and I just, you know, I, I, some of the stuff I'm doing before uh, we start this, but I like to just do it every time because I, I think it's a good reminder, right, when we're doing... Why is that due diligence on these properties um, that we should be doing it every single time? And it looks like, okay, we did, we, we passed that 800 and it, it dipped back down a little bit. Um, and, you know, but this is, again, this is September. So we're in October. Um, I wonder where that, I don't even see that 7,800 dip. Um, so that's interesting. It, it seems like uh, we should be, not just paying 50%. So what's going on here? You know, your projected return, 10,000. Let's see, 12,420. Does that match up with the rent that we've got? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, let's see. I don't think it does. 1085 times 12 should be 13,000. So 
It's not too far off, but it's off by a little bit. Um, yeah, they're showing a large amount of operating reserve replenishment still built into what they're paying out. Uh, and then your annual cash flow. So once that's actually fully um, full, we should be, you know, this should be doubling, right? Because right now they're putting half of it in there. Uh, and it looks like we're close to that. I don't know. So let's look and see um, if there's some notes uh, as far as like where where those expenses are coming from. Notes are back. Okay, so that we have we have no notes as far back as since April. Um, all right, let's look at one more thing in here. So this has just been fluctuating up and down, which it should be going up. Right. I mean, if we're if we've had a tenant in place, uh, they've been collecting rents. So let's look at the transactions they provided. OK, this is two months old, but it still should help us out a little bit. Legal and professional maintenance and repairs, 375 uh, city of Davenport rental license tenant protection plan, lofty holdings. OK, that's the owner distribution management fees which makes sense we have that on the thing rent online why is this number lower did i write down the wrong number that's possible let's look at her at the this says 1085 let's look at the lease itself this is the fun part, right? We get to go and, uh, okay, and the lease that we have is older, right? Let's see. And I'm sure this isn't an over two year lease. So we don't have the current lease in the file. This is very common. Um, you know, and so th this is what, this is going to lead me to want to um, ask some more questions about, you know, what's going on? Why is that so low? Um, but, but let's think about this for a minute. Even, even if, uh, you know, worst case scenario. Well, let's see. It's very confusing, right? Like, let's let, let's look back at, at a few more things. So, it's in labor required storm door cut and replace. So, okay, this makes sense. Why you had a little bit of dip that month? Management fees, sewer, sewer unpaid sewer and garbage bill. Okay, so we had. A very long period of time so that you're not going to have that every time i don't know why that happened though owner distribution there reserve replenishment lofty holding it's not token purchase reserve replenishment okay i'm not sure what that's about that's interesting um Protection plan, owner distributions. Oh, oh, I know what. The, so every time when you somebody buys tokens, it puts a little bit of extra money into the operating reserve, and so that makes sense that 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 goes up there. But why why are we not done paying into that? Is what's confusing. It looks it looks like the reserve is high enough. Uh, Hmm. And this is just, you know, this is the fun part about, about buying these things on Lofty is a lot of times we're going to have to guess, right? We're going to have to figure out. And so what I'm going to actually do on this one is I'm going to go and send um, some notes through, through the chat. And I actually do this quite a bit uh, to Lofty and just ask like, hey, what's, what's going on here? Looks like the operating reserve is full. I mean, they say 7,800 here but it's never clear when the last time um month, monthly cash flow of 620 it'll take 0.6 months for the reserve to be full um and so once that happens that would mean next month it should be full um but it but looking at that chart it should have been full you know all these months so really unclear what happened um you know, it, it is part of the risk of, of investing on here is you're, you're, you have a lot of uncertainty. Um, but at the same time, if you're willing to do this work to dig into it, you know, okay, uh, am I, I'm not super excited about a 8% yield or, or even 4%, but I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, primarily looking for yield properties in this. You know, I, I think that the real opportunity on Lofty at the moment 
is identifying these misprice tokens. And so, you know, this might be one that never really returns um, a ton of money, but, you know, we bought it at a, a significant discount and someday in the future we sell it or someday the pricing on Lofty gets to be where it makes a lot more sense relative to property prices and, um, you know, and the, and the token's worth closer to what the pr property price is. Either of those scenarios, and, and we, we've made, you know, a huge return just by buying it. Um, it, it would even be one where uh, maybe this would make sense to purchase it and then put up a vote trying to trying to sell it. And if we can get, um, you know, anywhere near where that where that price is to sell it, uh, it's, it's also a profit. So um, for all those reasons, uh, you know, I think it's an interesting one. I am going to try to get those questions answered um, and then, you know, I think there's a decent chance I'll buy some of these tokens, though, because I think that's um, you know, there's that opportunity opportunity there. Uh, just as a reminder, just because I buy some of those tokens doesn't mean it's the right answer for you. Um, so you want to do your own due diligence, figure out does this match up with the the risk profile that you have? Are you okay with those returns? You know, maybe you want the cash flow more than the um, than the discount, and that's that's a reason to do something different from what I'm doing, um, or having a different risk tolerance. All those things. In any case, uh, until next time, I'm going to keep making mistakes so that you don't have to.